And we'll go ahead and start this one and starting off with Koslov sheet today. And like talking about more in general, what is it about Chinese language that might make it a little bit more challenging to assess students more specifically in that online environment when they are learning Mandarin Chinese? Koslov Shi, if you can start us off with that one, please. Sure. I think there is a there's a there's a couple things. Um, one of them that to me the solution is quite obvious, though this may be a controversial topic, and I'm okay with that. Um, so one one immediate challenge that comes to mind for many teachers, and I remember there being a lot of sort of discourse in our field when the pandemic broke and we suddenly were forced to all go online, was the idea of assessing writing ability. Uh, and that's a big topic in Chinese pedagogy. One of the bigger issues I think that we haven't resolved well there is uh, often there's a conflation between do we mean writing and are we specifying modality or are we specifying the skill, right? Are we talking about ability to produce letters or characters or symbols, right, graphemes, or are we talking about the ability to compose text? Because when we talk about writing in terms of proficiency, in terms of the national standards, in terms of most of our state standards, we're talking about the ability to compose text, and that is medium agnostic, so to speak. We're not talking about specifically whether you can handwrite or whether you can type. And that's sort of a non-starter for most languages, right? It's it's a particular concern for many teachers for Chinese for a variety of reasons. I'm actually co-editing a book on this topic right now. Uh, so it's, it's quite a big topic, both in the online space, but even in the face-to-face -face classroom, sort of what does writing mean and how do we assess it and how do we make sure, sort of what standard do we hold our students to? Should they be forced to write characters by hand from memory? And what does that look like in an online space? Does that mean they have a digital tool like a tablet that they then write on and like take a screenshot of and submit? Is it that they write something on paper and they take a picture of it and they submit it? You know, Chinese teachers are nothing if not thorough. So liking to do things like, oh, you missed a stroke here, you missed a stroke there becomes a little bit complicated when you're writing on top of a piece of paper that someone submitted digitally, right? So there's some tool challenges there. But I actually don't think that's as big of an issue as we make it. I think we, as a field, have a lot of reckoning to do with what we prioritize in terms of what writing means anyway. So I think the challenge isn't so much in the online space of assessment as it is with us as a field and us as individual teachers, clarifying kind of what we mean by writing ability, for example, and how we want to teach it, how we want to assess it, what is realistic to expect from our learners to achieve in the very limited amount of time that they have with us, even in a flagship program like Peng Lao has the awesome uh, opportunity to be a part of, you know, they really are with us for a very limited amount of time overall in their life. So expecting that they're going to sort of go through the same literacy development path as an L1 user who has hours and hours and hours and years and years and years and a very differentially developed sort of linguistic system when they start that literacy development process, I think is something we as a field need to grapple with. And then on the other hand, you have the challenges that are not unique to Chinese, right? Those assessing interpersonal speaking, for example, in the online space, which looks really different if you're teaching asynchronously versus synchronously. Um, and that's certainly not unique to Chinese, but it is something we more and more are trying to figure out. And I think there are a lot of really nice tools and there's something to be considered at least from the various kind of big assessments that exist in our field when we have these restrictions imposed on us by, you know, we only have access to certain tools or we're only teaching in a certain way. Um, so for example, the AP Chinese assessment, right, which is something that's heavy on high school teachers' minds and even is on the minds of those of us who are in higher ed a little bit because we're dealing with things like do what do they get credit for, for example. The AP test doesn't do live interpersonal assessment, right? It's what you might call semi-interpersonal, right? It's a prompt that's pre-recorded that everybody gets the same prompt and then you respond by recording an answer. So it lacks a little bit of that kind of naturalness in interaction, but it actually, and it has been criticized for being kind of non-authentic, right? But I would actually argue all the Chinese teachers here probably are users of WeChat, which many years before uh, like 
iMessage on iPhones developed the ability to do voice texting. And voice texting is asynchronous. I record something, send it to you, you hear it, and you eventually record a response. And that is sort of an interpersonal way of interacting. Um, so I think we have a lot of interesting tools at our disposal. Often it is, we need to be a little bit creative, but we also need to be really thoughtful and intentional about what is it, what is the skill that we want to develop? How do we mean proficiency, performance? What ability do we care about the students developing? And then what we assess, I will be the, I, this is the hill I'm willing to die on, right? What we assess is what we value. And what we assess then is what students will value. So if we say communication is the most important thing, but we're testing their ability to handwrite characters accurately, are we testing what we value? If we say the most important thing is interactional ability, but we're testing their ability to memorize a dialogue, I'm not saying that's a bad test. I'm saying that's a misalignment of value, right? So I think we as a field really have to be careful to think about what are the things we care about? What are our priorities given limited time? And then how are we going to test them in the constraints that exist in an online space or even in a not online space? Excellent points. And I also like how you talked about how you specifically sometimes will use technology to kind of bridge those gaps, sometimes writing over top of things. And I really liked your example about WeChat, how that is an interactive communication that's happening, not synchronously necessarily, but it is also very much the interactive communication. So thank you for sharing your insights on that. And I'll go ahead and pass that question to Peng Laoshi. Again, that's the same question talking about what is it about Mandarin Chinese that makes it challenging to assess students more specifically in that online environment? And if you want to talk a little bit about how you use technology to bridge those gaps, we'd love to hear your insights on that too. Um, I Yeah, this is a great question. I agree with uh, Gao Lao Shi or Kaos Lao Shi on his uh, insight about you know the alignment of value in assessment. I think um, for from what I see, the the biggest challenge sometimes is uh, the teacher's um, sensitivity or uh, how up to date in technology uh, in their assessment uh, tools. So uh, in the past, we use a lot of paper pencil tests and uh, traditional listening reading tests and uh, without involving the interaction part or, uh, but when we are teaching in an online environment, uh, we are in order to uh, help students uh, keep engaged or um, interested in the class. Uh, and the continued uh, to um, interact with other students in the online environment. So we we were um, we we had to do some changes. We had to make some changes to performance based assessments. For example, sometimes it may have to do with projects or may have to do with uh, tasks. Um, uh, one of the tools I like uh, to use uh, in projects uh, is Padlet. Um, I like the uh, the fact that students can um, collaborate with others and then uh, they they can even turn it into a Kanban board and then say, okay, this is what we are doing. This is what we are going to do. And this uh, is what we have done for this project. And then uh, it's a process. So uh, that's one of the tools um, I would recommend to include uh, in uh, assessment. Uh, another challenge I notice is actually students, um, cultural wise, uh, what is students ready for? What type of assessment, what type of feedback are they ready to uh, accept? Um, Chinese teachers uh, tend to be, um, some teachers are too kind. Uh, they don't give a lot of, um, um, how do you say, firm uh, feedback or um, uh, they, they tend to be too, too kind. There is another type of Chinese teacher. Uh, they are too strict. Uh, so <laughs> it's uh, uh, culturally, um, actually, how, uh, uh, teachers need to be more sensitive, more uh, need to be um, understanding the students' needs when they are giving feedback or even designing the assessments. Uh, at this level, what is the purpose uh, of this course? Uh, why do students uh, learning in the online environment? What do they want to achieve? 
Uh, so it goes back to uh, what Gao Lao Shi mentioned, the alignment between what we value and what we want to achieve and also what students want to uh, take away from the learning process. So I think um, these are the two observations I have. You brought up a very important point, and it's something that I sometimes struggle with as an educator. There is the need to be kind and give students the positive feedback, but when there is an issue, when something needs to be addressed, we also need to make sure that we're addressing the problem, but also not being too strict or too harsh. So there really is that balance. And I think in the online world where they can't see us face to face, whenever they're reading our feedback, my students can't tell the tone of my voice. They can't see my facial expressions. So it's kind of important that we have to convey this message that feedback is all about growth and improvement. And we appreciate the work that you're putting forth here's what you're doing well, but then let's work together on these areas. So I really appreciate you bringing that up. It's a very important topic in the online education. Thank you for that. And we'll pass the question to Wang Laoshi. Again, the question is about when providing feedback in the online environment, how do you essentially address the, the complications, I guess some of the challenges with Mandarin Chinese with your students. And if you can talk a little bit about how you bridge that gap with technology, I would love to hear a little bit about that too. Okay, okay, excellent question. Um, so there are, you know, the variations and the complexity of the language, including like a different written formats and dialects. Uh, for example, we have students uh, whose parents are from mainland China, there's heritage students who are up in Taiwan, uh, Hong Kong, uh, Southeast Asia, um, and then plus we have students who just have a no background uh, in speaking Mandarin Chinese. And students, you know, have exposures to simplified format versus traditional Chinese. Uh, they may speak Cantonese at home versus Mandarin. Uh, there are many different, uh, you know, dialects and accents in China itself, and Mandarin is just one of them. So for English speakers studying Chinese, it is hard for them to tell the difference. Uh, when our students study abroad in so southern provinces in China, they often get confused due to the differences between local dialects and Mandarin Chinese taught at school. So they may have questions, you know, question themselves uh, on site and think, oh, is my Chinese good enough? Um, my Chinese is not standard without knowing. Uh, the, actually, the people there are speaking a dialect, not Mandarin Chinese, right? So some of our students are heritage speakers and the parents may have taught them traditional Chinese at home. However, at school, they may be taught like simplified Chinese instead. And some schools may teach both simplified and traditional Chinese like BYU they, they does. Uh, for beginners, that may cause a lot of confusion uh, if they really have no knowledge about you know, the format. Uh, so when I design the assessment, I have to consider a lot of factors that do not exist in other languages, which may affect student performance on the test. So can students read a test question in simplified Chinese? If they are a transfer student uh, from a different school district that's like teaching one format and our school district uh, um, does not, and can those transfer students from like a international school, like in a certain area like Singapore or, you know, mainland or Taiwan, are they fluent in PE, you know, to type, you know, if it's an online, you know, exam, can they type in PE, can they uh, type simplified or can they type uh, traditional, can they read the test instructions? Um, so should I include both the PE and simplified Chinese in my test, uh, especially for like an intermediate above level, you know, Chinese classes? So uh, when I design online quizzes, I said, you know, expected the, you know, a test outcome include uh, instructions that are crawling late. Um, so for example, if I wanted the goal is to test uh, how well students studied assigned, you know, vocabularies for this week. Um, so I just, uh, you know, want them to know, like um, I studied this, uh, let's say 20 uh, word caps, and I, I know uh, the meaning of them so I can match, you know, the Chinese with the English, I probably would include both the PE and the, the simplified, or if I have a student from, um, you know, a background that involves traditional characters, I will put a different formats so that all the students can read it because the goal is to test how well um, the master 
you know, the vocabulary to understand the basic meaning. Um, so the goal is not to distinguish from one version to the other. I would put instructions in different formats to help them um, understand the questions. Uh, also, you know, I would uh, uh, let them know the tools before the test that they could use to study for the test. For example, they can download certain apps um, and use a certain website to facilitate their study. So. Those are all excellent ways to help bridge the gaps and, you know, thinking about all the dialects and, and nuances of Mandarin Chinese and, and just different dialects in general. You know, it's really a lot to think about and it does kind of bring extra layers into it. But I love how you're using technology to essentially kind of differentiate maybe the instruction, but also the assessment as well, if needed. And I think the the key takeaway that I'm taking from all this is that we really need to stay focused on what's important to assess, not necessarily the nuance of how are we assessing it and how do I ask this question? It's more what do we value and making sure that we're assessing the right things. So great discussion on that one. Thank you for that.